What is up, everybody? Okay, now that we're done with all these technical issues, let me show you what it is we are working on today. So, we are going to finish this baby quilt off. Now, for the sake of time, I've gone ahead and made my quilt sandwich here. But, we're doing it a little differently. I've got the top down, and then my back facing my top. And then on the very top is going to be the batting. And you'll see why we're doing this. This is a little bit different than how you would do a normal quilt. Okay, this is going to be a pillowcase quilt. And it's going to save you from having to bind. So what we're going to do is we're going to put wrong our right sides and right sides together. Sew all the way around the perimeter and then we're going to turn it inside out. And then we'll smooth it all out, make sure we get all the way to the seams. We'll sew around the perimeter of the seams, and then we'll do some stitching across. So, really easy. And, uh, so let's get started. Okay, now, with this being a smaller project, I'm not really worried about pinning it. Um, I'm not jumbling it around, and I've cut everything to where it should all be lining up, so we're just going to go with that and run and gun. If this were a bigger quilt, then yes, I would definitely um, be pinning it. Now the other issue, the other thing too is, um, I'm going to flip it over. Because when I'm sewing it, I want to be seeing the edge of my quilt top. See that? So I don't want to be sewing looking at that. I want to be sewing knowing where my edge is so I can follow that and then we'll trim the rest of it off. This is pretty square, but you know, it came out a little wonky and we're all right with that. Okay, so I'm going to start a little bit off the project, and I'm going to back stitch just a little bit. Now, just like anything else here, we want to keep our project moving at the same rate as our needle's going through. So if it gets hung up over here in the corner, it's going to make everything shift, and we don't want it to do that. So even though this is a quick project, still let's take our time and uh, make sure everything's lined up and stays where we need it to stay. Now I'm using my walking foot, or it's also referred to as an even feed foot. You don't have to do that. Um, you can probably get away with a regular presser foot, a quarter inch. Now when I get to the end here, I'm just going to make sure my needle's in the down position and then we're going to lift the presser foot and we're going to rotate our work. That way everything stays in place. There's no need to uh, break your thread or anything. Now if you wanted to, you could just sew off the end, cut your thread and start over, but we're not going to do all that. We're just going to keep rocking on down the row here. You know what? I need to get just a little bit closer, so we'll turn it back for just a second. Make a couple more easy stitches. 
Now, there we go. Now back to the same plan here. Press your foot down. So now, the thing about batting, when you put it on your fabric, it's going to kind of stick where you put it. So as long as you're not wadding it up and uh, really being rough with it, a quilt this size, you really don't need to pin. You can if you want, but I don't find that it's really necessary. Just every now and then, take your... Take your fabric and your uh, whatnot and adjust it. Okay, so on my on my um, quilt sandwich here is what they refer to the point we're at. We've made a quilt sandwich. My batting is just a little bit shorter, you know, maybe by a finger width than my fabric. So I'm going to still sew along my fabric. It's all right. We're going to have a little pocket that doesn't have batting uh, on the border, but I'm not going to go out and buy a whole nother piece of uh, batting just because I'm you know, a three quarters of an inch or a half inch off for just a little bit. See, they're not going to do that on the TV shows, but that's real life. That's that, eh, it's all right. Now, I'm also going to pay attention here. We're going to sew all the way around three sides. Okay, keeping these lined up. Now, when we get to our fourth side, we're not going to close it up. We're going to leave about six inches. I'll show you why in a minute. So press your foot down and let's get rocking again. So now the tabletop I'm working on has kind of some sharp corners. So it likes to get hung up. Now if you're doing this on your kitchen table, then your quilt will probably not get hung up because a lot of kitchen tables have nice rounded corners and rounded lips and stuff and it actually makes it a little easier. So the next project is going to be to uh, round off the edges of this table. Top. Okay, so we're coming to the end here, and I'm going to stop probably about two more inches. Okay, now since I'm stopping my stitches, I went ahead and backstitched. Okay, so we're going to make sure we do that, and then we're going to do a needle up, pull my work out a little bit, and then we're going to snip the thread. Okay, so now, here's where, here's why we did like we did, okay? 
here's why we did our top back and then binding on the outside or the uh, batting on the outside because now we're gonna flip it inside out okay so we're gonna reach all the way diagonally across put our fingers up here in the corner Flip this in and just be gentle it will come through it might be a little bulky just work it work it out okay work it all the way around all right now something I didn't do because I just you know I'm not that particular about it is go through and you can go through and trim you know trim your stuff off if you want um, I didn't do that because I don't think it's that big of an issue I didn't have a whole lot extra on my seam and we got a fire truck going by Okay, so, and I got a little spot here where it missed, so we're just going to remedy that real quick. Oh, you booger. Alright, so I knocked my thread out again. We're going to have to get used to this. Keep knocking it out. I'll become a professional needle uh, threader here by the end of the day. There we go, that was quick and painless. Okay, so now I guess I will take just a second here. And surprisingly, I don't have a, now that I just started my needle, I don't have a, um, bobbin full of white thread. So, we're gonna wind one of them real quick because I'm going to be stitching on the back and I don't want black uh, bobbin thread going through the back. So, for you new folks, when you got your bobbin, you see a little hole, you always want to come in this way and out the top. Okay? And then put it on your bobbin winder, however your machine does that. This is how mine does it. This is how we're going to do it, and it don't take long. Okay, so we'll get this bobbin wound, and then... We'll get the quilt spread out, flatten it out, and um, we'll start quilting. And no, Peggy, I didn't pin or baste it because it's a small quilt. Um, I trimmed everything up. I did that before we started just for uh, time's sake. If this was a bigger one, then yeah, I would have pinned it, basted it somehow. But, um, you know, this is a little like 30 inch or 36 by 36 quilt, so it's fairly easy to handle. So I'll pull a little bit of a tail out. So my bobbin um, is a bottom feed. A lot of the new machines now are like drop-ins. Okay, so now we'll th re uh, re-thread the machine here, which doesn't take too long. I've gotten pretty used to doing it. 
Some discs. Say that and then I do it wrong. Do, do, do. I don't hit it right either. Well, what the hell? I've only had to do this a couple times now. But I think it might be down. We'll call it that. We'll see. The worst thing that's going to happen is it's not going to stitch right, right? And if it doesn't, we'll figure it out. There we go. Run our bobbin thread up. Okay, that's what I did wrong. That's what I did wrong, folks. I didn't need to go back through here right, right away. There we go. That looks better. Boom. Okay, so yeah, I've only had this machine for... Um, going on two weeks now so I'm still learning it everything's not quite second nature quite yet so I'm sure you guys can relate to that you get a new machine and still learning how she works okay oh yeah we got her all right now we're back. Okay. Okay, so now I've got this all flipped out. Okay. Now we've got our one opening and we're, we'll take care of that in just a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to lay this out and you'll be able to fill if you've got wrinkles or whatever. But we're going to take it and bring everything to the outside nice and smooth. Okay. And now when we get to this part, I'm aiming down a little bit. Okay, so when we get to this part here, when we're sewing, we're just going to flip this in and flip it in like this. Okay? And just match that seam up. like that. And you know what? The borders may not be the most even, but that's all right. That's okay. We're not going for perfection. Um, you know, this ain't a county fair quilt. It's just a uh, making a quilt for a baby to drag around. So, Okay, Patty, join us later. Okay. 
So we are going We are going to get stitching on So we got a couple issues, but yeah, we'll work them out. All right, so I'm just gonna start in the corner, and what I'm gonna do is on on the two seams, I'm gonna try to make sure that they're laying on top of each other, not kind of off one way or the other. And once again, as best we can, okay? Because a finished quilt is better than a perfect quote. I'm not making a quilt to be judged. I'm making a quilt to be loved on. And you know what? They're not going to worry about the little mistakes. And with the size of this, this doesn't take long. A couple trips around the block and we're done. Okay, so now we got some craziness going on on this side because I didn't realize that I didn't stitch this whole damn side. So we're just going to fudge it a little bit. Because that's what y'all would do in your sewing room. So we'll just turn this under and this will just look like a French seam. No big deal. So the nice thing about doing these lives, okay, for one, you're going to see my mistakes and that's cool. I don't care because that'll show the new folks. Um, Hey, he just made the same mistake I did. And if I'm making some of these silly ass mistakes after quilting for the amount of time that I've been quilting, then it's alright for a new person to make them because we all make them. But where experience comes in is learning how to fix your problem. learning not to beat yourself up over it because stuff happens so we're just rolling over the edges and just closing them up now because of the way I'm having to do this I'm not really doing the quarter inch seam because I don't want a big flange so I'm sewing as close to that edge as I can that way it'll close it up now for your guys's machine this is a pretty stout machine um, so 
for your machine, I didn't trim it before I turned it out, you know, right side out because there wasn't a whole lot of bulk. But if you have a lot of bulk and your machine can't handle that, make sure you trim around and make it a quarter inch seam before you flip the quilt right side out. Okay, that way you're not having to sew over a bunch of excess of uh, batting and fabric and stuff like that. Okay. Same thing, we're going to keep our work moving with us. Keep it moving around. Now I'm down here where the opening is, so I'm going to make sure um, that I go ahead and get that situated. So when I get down here, it's already in place and I can just stitch and turn the corner. here make sure this is flipped under so what I'm doing all right let's go let's go shaky mode for a minute Bam. turn you around here all right so what I'm doing is this is the pocket where we turned it out so now I'm just flipping it under all the way like so and then I'll stitch along here and then if you look hard yeah you're gonna see it but it's not gonna stick out and it's not gonna look terrible and you know what if my the kid that's getting this can point out where the uh, seam looks funky you know what I'll be impressed Okay, y'all, we're getting there, getting there, getting there. All right, so another couple inches and uh, we'll be golden. Now the only thing with a walking foot, this machine will do 1500 stitches a minute. I mean this bad boy will race along. With your walking foot on though, you don't want to do that. Those things are not meant for speed. tight enough somehow oh, that's crazy okay so we got it done all the way around now for simple quilting okay um we can either do in the ditch all right in the ditch will be where you try to follow exactly on the seam here. Or, to make it a little nicer, you know, we may try where you just offset it. So instead of in the ditch, and then if you get out, you're going to be able to tell. I'm going to run just along the outside. Okay? 
and then that way it'll look uniform and if some of your points don't line up exactly then you're not trying to stitch in the ditch and it's not going to make it look that more obvious because we'll, we'll still stay a quarter inch away. Okay, and same question people are probably going to ask. Well, why didn't you start quilting from the center out? Well, because this is a tinky, tiny, little, easy-to-handle quilt. I mean, you know, it's almost just barely bigger than the bed of my machine. So, I'm not worried about bunching and all that jazz. We'll be all right. So, I'm going to get going, and we'll do a couple, and then, um, yeah. Now, as I'm moving this through my machine, I do want to keep it nice and flat, and you can fill. You'll be able to fill if there's lumps or something up under there. times and it'll probably be good. See, and this doesn't take long. So once again, we want to keep our project moving and keep it flat on the bed of our machine. This is one area where uh, having bigger hands helps out because then you can spread out and you got better grip and you can smooth out a bigger area. So when you get towards the end, if it's starting to pucker, just give it a little, give it a little zhuzh, stretch it out a little bit. Okay, so I'm not going to do the whole thing just for the sake of time, but um, because it's not comfortable to me, Gene, my knee lift isn't, i got to make some adjustments to it. Okay, we'll flip you around. Okay, so over here, here we are. So instead of trying to follow directly in here, and then if I come out, you're going to be able to see it, you know, if there's any kind of whatever like that. Instead, now this looks nice and even all the way up. All the way up, you see that? And then once I do this seam and do this seam and then do this seam, it'll make this square look, look like it's framed in. And I can get fancier and come in and do even, you know, even more squares. So I call that straight line, straight line quilting or walking. Really easy. Okay, so that's it, guys, guys and gals. Um, Pretty simple project. I think it turned out cute. I'll take another final look at it. And like I said, a finished quilt, always better than the perfect quilt. So there she is. And as I get it quilted more, it'll lay flat and all that jazz. And then we got this on the back. Oh, and I was going to show you guys this too. So, for my back fabric, 
I had to piece pieces together. Sorry for the movement, y'all. So, what I did, you can see the seam right here. So this piece was long enough, but it wasn't wide enough. So I whacked off the end, and then I had a piece that was twice this wide. So it was like out to here, but it wasn't wide enough. So I cut it in half, sewed it down here to make this longer, and then sewed that to the edge. Okay? But it doesn't matter because that's the back of the quilt. And here is the back for the stitching coming through on the front. So it doesn't look bad. You know, and I didn't want to use the black because I think the black would have been too much. Running over these little medallions, it would have stuck out. So, that is the completion of our first project. So, if you guys have any questions, I'll take questions. If not, um, I enjoy doing these. Thank you for joining me, and uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for learning, and uh, our group is growing very fast, very awesome. I love it. It's a very active group, and everyone seems like they're happy to be here, and we love that. So, no more questions. I'm going to get off here. Y'all enjoy your day. Go out and quilt. Make a couple of these baby quilts. They're not hard to do. The same principles will apply to the larger quilts. So they're great practice. They're easy to deal with. And if you're a beginner, there's no better way than getting your solid like foundation skills down than making simple baby quilts. So give it a shot. Um, You've seen everything I did today in the last video, so it's not that hard, not that long. The only thing you didn't see me doing was uh, taking the top, the bottom, and the batting and squaring it up on the cutting board. Um, but that's not that hard. You Make sure you're cutting from your, your top should be your top piece. You know, that way you're trimming your top and you're not trimming it. You're not trimming your top to the back. You're trimming your back to the top, if that makes sense. So uh, the next time we do a big quilt, um, we will learn how to do a proper quilt sandwich the proper way where it's the backing, batting, and then top, and then we'll try quilting it and uh, do a proper binding. Bindings are not hard. People are always afraid of them or don't want to do them. They are not hard, guys, okay? So we will tackle that, and uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.